You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence.com. I'm Mike, and this is going to be the Montegrappa Maya 450. This is the outer box. It's number 30 out of 100. Let's get in here. Get these other boxes out of the way. The presentation box is very nice. They always do a good job with boxes there at Montegrappa. It's kind of a leatherette feel. Uh, and also you have this nice plate at the top engraved in metal. This is Montegrappa. Inside you have the beautiful Montegrappa Maya 450. This pin is a loner. It was sent out for you by Kenro. Thank you very much, Kenro, for sending this out. They are the distributor of Montegrappa and several other brands. And this is a pen that is worth seeing on video. In Googling around and finding uh, information about this pen, I, I, it just made me glad that I get to show it on video because it is hard to capture in a still photograph. Sometimes it looks very dark. This is not a dark red pen. This is a bright red pen. Uh, although I've got a lot of light going on right now, so perhaps it's a, like you get this sort of darker angle and you tilt it this way, but it catches the light in really interesting ways. And one of the reasons for that is that this is a celluloid pen. That is also part of the reason why this is a fairly, a fairly expensive pen. It is limited in number. Uh, the material is limited itself because they're not making any more of this. This is celluloid from the Mazzuchelli factory. Uh, there are only a hundred of them made in this form. There are also uh, four other colors. There's a, um, a black and white, a yellow, and an orange. You can see the orange on Brad Dowdy's site. And uh, there's a dark blue, but there were only 50 of those, and I don't, I don't know if any of those are left. Those might be real hard to find. The reason they don't make this stuff anymore is because celluloid involves using nitrocellulose, and nitrocellulose has a tendency to, um, well, to burn very hard, and so a lot of factories had serious problems. Uh, they, there were all kinds of fires, and so they just stopped making it. Because old film is made out of this. Don't light old film, kids. It's a bad idea. But also, pen bodies... And this is gorgeous. They stopped making this stuff in like the late 90s, early 2000s, I want to say. So there's not a terrible amount of this left. But you can see, I think, and this is not faceted. This is a perfectly smooth pen. But man, the chatoyance in this pen when you move it through the light is kind of amazing and hard to capture in still photography. So uh, let's look at some details here. You will see on the bottom here. It's number 30 out of 100. I like that it's marked there on the tail of the pen and not somewhere else where they'd have to engrave it or something. This doesn't, I actually didn't notice this for a little while because I don't look at the end of my pen a lot of times. But uh, yeah, number 30 out of 100. Nice and clean, easy to find. The clip here is a very stiff clip. I've had one complaint about this pen, aside from the price, which is $1,000 street or uh, uh, manufacturer suggested real retail price, is that this clip is very, very stiff. But I don't really think this is a pen you're going to be putting in your pocket. I mean, it's got a roller on it, so that helps. But uh, it is a very stiff clip. Uh, the hardware on here is all sterling silver. It is hand engraved. You can see here we have a Montegrappa. We have some of this uh, engraving here. We have a Made in Italy. On the back, what does this say? You have a nine. It says here. I actually had to get super close. Nine twenty-five here. That's about the silver. And this is twenty-six seventy V. I think it's very very small. I'm not really sure what that engraving means. Maybe somebody. Will t I'm sure somebody will tell me in the comments. On the top, you have the Montegrappa uh, sort of logo with that nineteen twelve on there and the leaves. Uh, this is just, it's a really pretty pen, and it's actually one that I did take it out of the house a few times, but given the expense of this pen, I didn't really carry it around a whole lot and show it to people, uh, because, um, you know, I'd hate to, <laughs> hate to lose it or mar it or something. So, uh, real pretty. I like the way they have this band here at the bottom. Uh, this is a nice, uh, smooth barrel to it, uh, and then you uncap it, and it's very, very smooth. I want to show you these threads right here, because these threads Man, these are so good. Like, this might be a silly thing to focus on a, on a $1,000 pen, but the uncapping motion feels really nice. The cap never comes loose, or at least it hasn't in my uh, my experience. But this these threads, because I tend to hold it, like, right here, these threads are, like, almost entirely smooth. You can sort of feel they're there, but it's freaky how smooth those are. Other pen makers, take note. Get rid of those giant steps. Put in super smooth threads. Then you have a uh, black... Uh, nib section here, you have a 14 karat gold nib, 
Uh, this one is a fine flex nibs. These are Yovo flex nibs, just like you'll find in Franklin Christophs and a couple of other brands that use them. Uh, I'm mostly familiar with them from Franklin Christoph. They have these little cutouts in the side. I do think that the addition of the Montegrappa engravings here on the nib are really nice. I think that is a really handsome nib. Sometimes it can go a little bit overboard on nib uh, and nib scratchings, but this one looked real good. Uh, and it writes like you would, and actually you can see the there you go. You can see the the cutouts there through the bottom of the feed. Really nice. Good. Um, and it writes like you would expect a 14K Yovo flex nib to write, which is pretty smooth. I'm not the best at flex writing. I'll show you. I'll give you a little writing sample later on. Uh, but uh, I'm not that great at flex writing because I tend to twist my pen a little bit and I write from the side a little bit. And it's not the best for me. Uh, but they have a wide variety of nib options that you can get. Then you open it up and it is a cartridge and con or converter pen. It does unscrew. It's a screw in converter which I am on record as being a fan of, it means that your uh, means your converter is not ever going to fall out and fill the body of your, ink, your pen with ink. Sailor. Let's get this back in here. Love Sailor pens, but man, they're converters. Leave something to be desired. There we go. All right. I got a nice blue in there right now, but uh, this is just a standard piston converter. Uh, inside the body, there are metal threads and stuff. Don't eyedropper this. That would be a bad idea. Uh, you also have this nice metal bit right here uh, that it screws into. So no plastic there connecting. It's metal on metal connections. Okay, let's do a little writing sample and then see how it looks next to a bunch of other pens. Okay, let's do a little writing sample here. Uh, this is the Montegrappa. <laughs> couple of caveats before I start writing with this, and that is that I've been waving this around for a while, and also that I can't really see what I'm writing unless I look in the camera, so I can't like look at my pen like a normal person would when they're writing, which makes it feel weird. <laughs> so, you know, writing on camera is not the easiest thing. Yeah, started right up. Good job. Micah. Good job, Mike. Maya. I'm not going to claim too much credit there. 450. Now this is a 14K. Fine flex. Uh, and I think you get a fair amount of flex out of this. I don't really, I, like, I don't like to push on it uh, because I, I tend to write from the side a little bit and so you don't get a great flex action if you're writing from the side a little bit. I don't know why I do that, but holding it like this, as you, pro as you properly should, feels weird to me. So I just don't do it that much. But um, you do get a nice, nice bit of line variation if you like just push on it just a little bit. And I find the feeds can keep up on these. Uh, you do get a good amount of difference, so just here's some little little hashes, and then here's the here's the eye pushed on it just a little bit, uh, which you can see it's it's quite a lot different. So sometimes I've seen people say this does nib doesn't really flex. Uh, I don't I don't think that's true. I mean, there's a big difference here for me. Uh, let's see if I can do it this way. What am I doing? There we go. So yeah, oh, I was doing it off camera. Oh, good job, Mike. Anyway, you can see uh, this uh, this vid here. It's actually, it's really hard to not look at the nib of your pen when you're trying to do flex. I, I just noticed that. So anyway, whatever. But you uh, you do get a nice amount of variation here in the uh, the line weights and that sort of thing from this Yovo flex nib. Uh, and you might be familiar with these from some other brands, uh, but I think this one looks pretty nice. And it's a nice addition to this pen line if you're a person who's into flex. I don't know that I would necessarily get the flex if I were gonna buy this pen. Uh, just because I don't really use the flex all that much. I, uh, I have a, a light hand in general, and uh, the flex nibs tend to be a little bit on the wet side. And also, like the way I write, I just don't I don't get the uh, the advantage of it much. It feels nice. It's nice and bouncy, but it's not. Um, you know, I, I'd rather just have a regular nib than maybe grind it into a stub or maybe just buy a stub to begin with. Get something cool like that. But uh, here it is. Uh, you know, writing sample. All right, let's look at it next to a bunch of other pens. Okay, so here you have the Maya 450. Shake it down a little bit. Dropped one of my own. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> here you have the Maya 450 next to a bunch of other pens, just to get an idea of size. Um, so starting over here with the Twisby Go, it's the extreme other end of the price spectrum. Then you have the Twisby Eco. Then you have the Twisby Vac 700, the Maya, uh, so the, the Maya 450. And then you have the Pilot 823, the 912 from Pilot. This is a Sailor, uh, Sailor um, 1911 Large. Then you have the uh, 8. 
no, <laughs> 3776 from Platinum, and then the regular old Pro Gear from Sailor. Of course, none of these are in the same price range because uh, I don't really have anything like that. But uh, you get a nice a nice range of things here. Right, let's throw this one in here too. This is a dual fold. It's about the same length, really, as a dual fold. Let's move this over here. There. Yep, just about the same as a dual fold. This is the big red. This is the actually red. Uh, but man, I think uh, I think that in terms of uh, of good looking this like this is this is a beautiful beautiful pen uh let's go ahead and take off the uh take off the caps and see how they look i'll talk about or show a little graphic of the uh the various like lengths and measurements and such for this guy uh at the end of the video but uh you can see here it is a perfectly normal length of pen. It's just about the same as the uh, 3776 and the 912s, uh, the uh, the Sailor 1911 large. Like these are all like kind of in the same range. The 700 and the 823 are of course way longer, and the dual fold has like a, I don't know a quarter inch on it as well. But uh, this is a perfectly normal length of pen. Uh, so when you hold it, and you can post this, I don't. Uh, but you can post it and it posts perfectly well. Uh, I think this is a really nice length of pen. And also I gotta say this section is very, very comfortable in part because of these super duper smooth threads. I mean, compare these to like, I mean, to like this guy, this VAC 700. Like, it's not even close. You got this giant, giant step. You've got these like threads you can definitely feel. There's a step from the threads to the section. Uh, even, on, uh, even on this dual fold, it's not as smooth a transition as on the Maya. The Maya really has that dialed in. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for checking out this video. I hope you get a chance to see a Maya 450 because it is a gorgeous pen in person and uh, definitely one worth checking out if you ever get a shot. Uh, it is sterling silver. It is celluloid. It is hand engraved. It is individually numbered. And um, these aren't going to last super long, even though the price point is kind of up there. So um, get your hands on one of these because they're pretty darn cool. Thank you for Ken to Kenro for letting me borrow this guy for so long. Uh, I'm looking forward to handing it back and not mailing it to you. So um, I will see you all later. Uh, peace out. Nitrocelluloid. Cell Nitrocelluloid. Cell uh, let's give it a little bit of. <laughs> is it bleeding? Did I use bad paper? I used bad paper for my writing sample?